Pilots must land their jets at night on moving American aircraft carrier. Skill and intuition are the only tools pilots have to navigate the huge, dark ocean. It takes a lot of talent, bravery, and nerves of steel to do this job. A few factors must be kept in mind before we can discuss the thrilling night landing. When a mission is over, planes can return to the ship in one of three ways, depending on the weather. First, there's clear weather during the day. Second, there's poor weather during the night. And third, there's a combination of the first two. To guarantee that all planes land safely, each approach follows uniform procedures, routes, and heights. As the planes return, air traffic controllers at the Carrier Air Traffic Control Center closely monitor their movements. All planes land safely thanks to these expert sailors. They are on par with their civilian counterparts in terms of expertise. The only other individuals on board with the authority to command an officer to do anything and then hold that officer to it is these two individuals. One crucial component of carrier aviation is the Carrier Air Traffic Control Center. Ensuring the safe return of all planes involved in the mission is its primary function. Aircraft typically take off in a 90-minute loop with 10 to 12 planes each time. Every cycle begins with planes taking off to make room on the flight deck for the remaining planes to be prepared for the next rescue. Every opportunity to get additional room is swiftly and efficiently capitalized on on the carrier since room is extremely valuable. Therefore, a crucial component of a carrier's operation is the release of aircraft at the start of each cycle. The longest wire aboard an aircraft carrier is number four, whereas the one furthest back is number one. The third landing line is the one that pilots aim for since it is near the ship's rear. The number one wire is generally avoided by pilots. Each pilot receives a score for each pass at the ship, but hitting even one wire is a win because it's so difficult. The skipper avoids utilizing the afterburner by setting the throttles to full power when they approach the landing area of the deck. In the event that the plane does not snag one of the wires, this precaution is taken. This ensures that the plane can take off again in the event that such an occurrence occurs. The term used to describe what happens when an aeroplane fails to hook a wire and subsequently takes off again is a bolter. There is very little wiggle space when landing on a ship, so if the plane doesn't hook a wire and can't take off again, the pilot will have to bail out. The safe landing of an aircraft depends on the pilot's vigilance and adherence to protocol. After an unsuccessful landing attempt, planes typically fly in a bolter pattern, which is a level circle racetrack above the ship. In the event that fuel is required, the pilot ascends to the tanker pattern, situated above the bolter pattern. Aeropt will dispatch a truck to keep an eye out for an aircraft in a low fuel situation when its fuel tank is getting low. Planes enter a complex braking sequence known as the Marshall Stack when flying at night or in adverse weather. One way to see the pattern is as a stack of pancakes atop the ship, with the pattern height varying for each pancake. The most important thing to remember while trying to separate planes in different patterns is to maintain tabs on every jet that is participating. With the help of the Mr. Hands pattern and the takeoff and recovery status boards, you can see exactly where every plane is in the sky at any given moment. A fuel state and side number are provided by an aircraft when it checks in with the Marshall controller at the Carrier Air Traffic Control Center. The plane's remaining fuel is measured in pounds and reduced to two digits. This is called its condition. With 6,500 pounds of fuel remaining in a Hornet, with aircraft side number 301, for instance, the pilot would say 301 state 6.5. It just takes a few seconds for the pilot to receive instructions on when to hit the push point, what recovery pattern to utilize, and where to remain behind the spacecraft. Importantly, the push point signifies the start of the landing procedure. Right now, pilots need to be completely prepared to accomplish their tasks. The night flying activities of the aircraft carrier are controlled by AROPS. Use of two status boards allows it to record the flight paths of all incoming and outgoing flights. You may see the plane's task, the pilot's names and numbers, the fuel level, the number of landing attempts, and more on these boards. All hands on deck will be able to view this information thanks to the ship's in-house television system. From the landing area, one of the ship's TV channels provides a live feed of the view towards the rear of the vessel. Pilots can observe their comrades' landings or use it to assess their own passes. This channel is audible from several locations around the ship, including the air bosses see on the bridge and every single ready room. Night landings on aircraft carriers are notoriously difficult, and you, the pilot, are about to face this challenge. Difficult weather conditions are present 
with scattered clouds reaching altitudes of 15,000 feet and a broken layer of clouds at 2,000 feet over the lake. Thunderstorms are also in the area, with the nearest one being 400 miles distant. For tonight, taking the carrier is your sole option. The ship is swaying wildly due to the increasingly strong seas. Landing signal officers are heard yelling power to pilots attempting to land if you tune into the last control channel. However, you should remain within your comfort zone and concentrate on landing. Landing a plane on a ship at night requires a great deal of skill and meticulous planning on the part of a naval pilot. When the clock on the plane reaches 2200, you check it against your watch and then notify the Carrier Air Traffic Control Center that you're ready to take off and have 6,000 pounds of fuel remaining. When you reach platform height, which is 5,000 feet above sea level, you will begin to descend toward the ship. The platform call is in place to ensure the safety of individuals at night because this height is perceived as hazardous. As for tonight's flight, it's unclear. Because visibility is impaired due to cloud cover, you will need to rely solely on your instruments to guide you into a safe landing. Stop descending at 1,200 feet and notify the air traffic control center of your location when you are 10 miles from the ship. They advise you to remain clear until 10, which allows the planes to pass one other more frequently. According to the taken screen, you are not to prepare your plane for landing until you are around 8 miles distant from the ship. After that, you swiftly drop the landing gear, flaps, and stopping hook, as per the landing checklist. You record the gasoline level and double-check all the settings. The ship is now 6 miles away, and your first pass is less than 2 minutes away. As the pilot approaches the carrier in preparation for a landing, AirOps becomes increasingly anxious. Three planes have taken off without successfully hooking the wire due to the ship's swaying in the turbulent seas. Two are in the bolter pattern. One has been dispatched to refuel with a flying tanker since its fuel supply is insufficient to continue the flight. Following consultation with an individual from the squadron, AirOps arrived at the decision. At AirOps, a senior member of every Air Wing squadron is on guard at the moment. Their primary responsibility is to monitor their own aircraft and provide relevant data to their respective units. However, in order for the ship to locate the relative wind, the captain contacts AirOps to inform them that a small course correction is necessary. The situation could get even more dire if the ship is unable to turn while the planes attempt to land. The correct amount of relative wind, however, is crucial for carrier activities. If there isn't enough wind over the deck, the landing signal officer will wave planes off and tell them to turn around again. On occasion, the ship will continue to sail in the same direction as the wind. Your aircraft's instrument landing system, ILS, detects the target signal as you approach the ship. This will set you up for success by sending signals for glide slope, azimuth, and elevation to your head-up display. Approximately three-quarters of a mile behind the ship, you will come to a point where center line meets the glide slope. Your pace is controlled, and you're descending from 650 to 750 feet per minute while hovering 360 feet above the river. You can get there with the help of ACLS technology, which latches onto your airliner. The runway front of you is constantly changing, so you'll need to adjust your rate of descent quickly, even though the ILS system is only functional in one direction. When three quarters of a mile from the ship, the landing signal officers on either side of the landing field take over the planes. Get into a good starting position to improve your landing chances. The deck pitches as you approach the ship for landing owing to severe seas, making it hard to utilize the glide slope indication or meatball. Instead, you must rely on the landing signal officer's radio calls for updates. The ship often does not feel even the biggest waves. The ship's bow is swaying tonight due to waves. This confuses and makes it hard to focus. The ship's rear ends will face you for one or two seconds before falling. This keeps happening, like a journey. You can hear the wire catcher plane pinging when you land on the deck, but you can't feel it. You quickly confirm military power, keep your plane's attitude, and climb away after missing the stopping wires. The skipper should fill up when the fuel is low. The pilot notifies departure control and continues the wave off bolter pattern until departure tells the tanker to turn. Due to weather, tankers are cruising above clouds, limiting visibility and accessibility. The pilot gets on board from within when the tanker's lights flare. Return to the ship immediately since a storm is coming. Due to the carrier's failure to maintain a stable sea condition, arrests are going unreported, generating concerns. The Air Wing's representatives and air operations are furious over the new bolter. Slowly, the train breaks down. 
A heading vector from the Carrier Air Traffic Control Center can guide you to the ship's route. Action must be repeated. Everything stays the same. You prepare your plane for a safe landing, monitor your heads-up display, and hope the ship is calm when you arrive. Gather the meatball three-quarters of a mile from the ship. Self-confident and anxiously hopeful, you are. This landing will take about 20 seconds. The ship has only a few lights near the starboard tower and a small landing box. The theme is darkness. The meatball is your concentration as the landing signal officer gives you a mild power call. You must make minute throttle adjustments and find the best angle of attack to keep the plane above the glide slope. Stay away from stronger opponents to dodge bolters. Precision is vital during the crucial boarding process. The ship's form gets clearer from the perimeter as you approach. At your thought speed, you feel like you're on the ground or a ship. The plane lands after lowering over the ship's back. Ship's weak lights pass. As the plane lands, its landing gear hits the ship's deck, making it audible. Full fight power is set. You hold your breath for the half second it takes to sense the line slowing, signaling a wire hook. Airline pilots stand out now. The ejection seat's brakes will first affect your shoulder, harness straps, then your head, and finally your torso as you forcibly drive yourself forward. When the plane presses on the wire, it strains it like a rubber band, causing an abrupt but welcome stop. You're relieved at first, but you'll recall how hard it was. Your knees tremble as you taxi away from the landing area after lowering the stopping hook and flaps. Dear friend, you have descended. Your pilot's soul is heavily coated. What a wonderful voyage to observe the precision needed to land an aircraft on a moving aircraft carrier at night. We hope you like seeing this difficult world, which shows these pilots daring and skill. Tell us your views. Does this seem rare or have you seen a carrier land? Tell us in the comments and subscribe to our channel for more amazing films like this. All eyes are on you.